There's this thing called vibe coding and it's kind of taking over the internet right now. The whole idea is that instead of understanding a coding language, or even if you do understand a coding language, you can create something that is built with code using prompts to an AI. That way you don't have to sit and write the code from scratch for a, an extended period of time to get the result that you want. You can brief an AI to do that work for you. And there's so many benefits to this. So firstly, if you do not know how to code, it's a great way to learn how to code because you can see what the code looks like at the end of the day. But also it is a great way to prototype something, get something out into the universe that it wouldn't have been there like half an hour prior to you thinking of it. I think it's also a really cool way to problem solve uh, coding scenarios or user interface experiences really fast because you can rapidly prototype stuff with it. And what kind of stuff can you prototype? Well, it's like anything from websites, games, YAML, if you've got a smart home, digital tools, think of anything that uses code or HTML, alerts on a live stream, for instance. You can rapidly prototype and build these tools using Vibe coding. Instance is one of the big new games in the space. And I'm gonna use Instance in this video to build a little game and see what that actually ends up looking like. Obviously, there are lots of other things that I could be building, but I think it would be fun to try and spend some time seeing if I can build a game <laughs> with this. By the way, Instance are sponsoring this video so I can show you what vibe coding is and you can check out Instance uh, for yourself. The most exciting part about this whole process for me is that there are a lot of people who that don't know how to code that are creatives or um, just missed the boat on that one, didn't study it at school, just didn't have that opportunity and have the capacity to use the cool things that they have in their imagination practically in the real world, which is definitely what a lot of my friends are capable of doing. They have some of the greatest creative minds, but in order to execute some of that stuff requires a huge amount of other discipline. And we only live one life. There's only so many disciplines we can have. You can't ask all your friends to code things for you all the time. <laughs> if you've got a cool idea for a blog or whatever the case is, now's your chance to give it a go and give it a try. So I'm excited to see what people use Instance for. So again, thank you Instance for sponsoring this. Go give them some love. Go check out the link below. This is instant.so. If you head on over there, um, you'll find a page like this once you've signed in and everything. You can launch your ideas. It's really as simple as that. It says you can, you know, there's some prompts here like fitness coach, infinite jumper game, sounds cool. Appointment scheduler, that's really, that's a great idea. Image compressor, joy, agency project manager. So there's so many things you can build. We're gonna build a game. So I'm trying to think of a game. I had this idea for a chess game. So I'm gonna do like a prompt where it's like, I'd like to build a chess game, or oh, single player. Single player chess game against an AI where the, with the rules, oh my word, I'm trying to type behind this microphone. <laughs> where the rules are traditional chess rules. Let's see what, what happens if I do that. It's connected to the server. Okay, cool, we're gonna, this, it's thinking. I really like this about it. It tells you what it's thinking, which is really nice. It's helpful because sometimes you do a prompt and you actually, are, you're basically briefing an AI to do something for you. And sometimes it's actually really hard to do that. You, what you have in your head is hard to articulate. And I think that's a skill that a lot of people are going to have to have, how to instruct AI in the future. So anyway, it says, I'll help you build a single player chess game uh, against an AI using traditional chess rules. The game will include a chess board, pieces. You see, even those things I didn't include. More validation. Uh, move validation, sorry, uh, and a an AI opponent will implement this using React and uh, Shadkin forward slash UI components uh, you already have in your project. Okay, cool, sick. That's another really exciting thing is that it can pull uh, API or, or plugins or tools and use them in your projects without you having to have any existing knowledge or research about those. So again, it can also, it becomes a research tool if you're building this stuff from scratch at some point, if you're prototyping, because you'll know what tools to look for um, in the future. It's even getting me a, a chess logic script. <laughs> it's creating one. Oh my word! Even just being able to build a game of chess from scratch is pretty cool. <clears throat> Something went wrong. Okay, let's try to fix it. I'll fix the error related to the missing export named cross2 from the Lucid React package. Again, if there's errors, it will be able to identify those errors and 
fix them. It's another thing. Sometimes you can't go through that code yourself. Oh my word! Hey, so this is the chess game. I just want to see how it works. I got a new game. I just asked it to make chess. So if I go, okay, I'm white, right? Okay. Oh, there it shows you where you can move. Okay, we can move there. Hey, I've played already. Uh, that is so sick! Can you make the checkerboard more pronounced? So it's instances kind of worked this out. It says, I'm going to make a chessboard more pronounced with clear black and white tiles instead of the current subtle color scheme. This will create a more traditional chessboard experience. Hmm. See, I could have written that stuff. Again, it's interpreting what I'm saying properly, which is really nice. There we go. Okay, so we've got like a better looking chessboard. Can we add a timer to each turn? 30 seconds a turn. So I'm adding some rules to it. I'll add a 30 second time for each turn in the chess game. Each player will have 30 seconds to make their move. And if they don't move within the time limit, they'll lose their turn or potentially the game. That was very ominous. Oh, there's the timer. It's on the top. Okay, so I've got a turn now so I can go. I have to play. Um, I'm committed. Oh, it's played already. Oh, that's the thing with uh, the PC. It's going to be fast, right? So. Eat the piece. Okay, so okay, okay. So now when I when I get a piece, when a piece is taken, add it to a virtual graveyard on the side of the winning player. Let's see what what happens there. It's interpreted this as I'm going to add a virtual graveyard feature to your chess game to display captured pieces on the side of the winning player. This will provide a nice visual representation of which pieces have been captured during the game. It knows why I've wanted to do that, which is pretty cool. So there we go. These are the, this is the graveyard. Can we add an explosion animation? Let's see what it does. This that's there's a lot of that's a very complicated um requests so i'm interested to see what they what they come up with i'm going to add an explosion animation that plays when a chess piece is captured by another player this will enhance enhance the visual feedback and make the capture motion action more satisfying to the player i also want to make the piece animate to the grid that it is going to instead of just popping you know when you click it just pops i want to make sure that it like slides like a slide animation I can also change the title chess game Explosion chess. I want to make sure that the AI also that we're playing against deliberates more before a play so it looks like it's taking its time. I really like this error thing. I'll fix error in the chessboard.tsx file. The issue is that there's some malformed JSX in the file where a closing tag is missing or misplaced. I also assume that once this gets better and better that there'll be fewer of, of those, right? Okay, so let's see what happens if I eat a piece. Oh, what happened? Something went wrong. Oh. Building games is complicated, it seems. And there's so many things that we could add. We could also add like, once you hover over a piece, it like chooses a direction, like can highlight directions that that piece can move. And we could toggle that off and on if you, you know, for newbies. Maybe it's like a way to, um, to teach people how to play. Oh, okay. Let's see. Okay. Captured by you. Boop. There's a little animation. Oh, I saw it now. It's a bit small. Could be cooler. Can the animation be, um, I guess, let's say like 300% bigger? It seemed to have made the explosion animation out of, I thought it would like take a GIF or something. Maybe we can upload a GIF. I can learn how to do that at some point. I'm also just being quite specific at 300% because I, I feel like 300% bigger would look more impressive on the board. Okay, let's see how this works. Gonna... There we go. I'll work out a way to make that better. But that's pretty impressive. I mean, we've been building for like 10 minutes. We've got a really good prototype. Can the um, AI, no, the computer player, no, the AI player spend more time deliberate? No, yeah, deliberate. 
deliberating. I'll modify the chess game to make the AI player appear more human by adding a, de a deliberation period. The AI will think for a varying amount of time before making its move, giving the illusion that it's strategi strategizing. That's exactly what I wanted. And this is the basic, like we can do so many things, like we can add variables. Like now that we've got a basic chess game, we could do things like this timer could ramp quickly, you know, it could like uh, the speed ramping. So every move, a, sh a second is shaved off the clock, right? <laughs> Easy. Stuff like that is pretty sick. Oh, you could do it like a roguelike. So you get like randomized cards that you play before each turn. Bellatro chess. Add a sliding a animation for the pieces. I even got uh, sliding. Right. Yes, I'll add a sliding animation for the chess pieces as they move to the new location of the board. This will make the piece movements are visible and and visually appearing. We should give the AI a name. While it's busy sorting that out, I'm going to write the new prompt. The deliberation period uh, needs to take place within the timer, within the 30 second timer. Uh, allocated to its turn. The more complex I'm making this, the riskier this code is becoming. I'll fix the error in the chess game.tsx where there is an issue with the JSX closing tag. The error is occurring due to some XML markup that's been mistakenly included in the JSX. It knows what's wrong and can fix it. I have no idea. Even if you did know, the time it would take to fix an issue like this would be huge. And like I've basically in 20 minutes, prototype something bonkers. I'll modify the chess game to incorporate the AI deliberation period within the allocated 30 second player turn timer rather than adding extra time that extends beyond the timer. Thank you. I'm very, very impressed. The thing is, like I said earlier, it's just like the options, the creative options to, to do this. So like you could do this on your phone and create games on the fly. If you've got an idea, you can. there's a publish button on the top right here, or you can download it. Work on the code yourself if you're a developer. right? Oh, there's the code editor right here. Here we go. We have access to all the files. It's got PNGs, <laughs> that is the favicons. Oh, it's taking favicons. It's, it's got all the compilers are in here, the scripts. It's wild. And then you can edit this if you know what you're doing. Have I, sorry, did I break something quick? Well, I was juggling through there. If something does break, you can revert to a previous state, which is awesome. Oop. It's fixing the issue that I had created. So I go here. Not a fan of that sliding animation. Oh, there it's working out. Hey, there's playing. It's playing in its own time. Oh, I was going to take the full 30 seconds. Listen. I guess it's helpful. I love the fact that it goes red. That was like a creative decision that took on its part and its own part. I think we should remove the timer. Let's remove the timer and the AI deliberation period. I think I'm, it's cool, but I'm doing something wrong here. We can make a more traditional chess game. So the select tool allows you to select something and I can just hit a one, type your message. Um, I want this to be, Queen's Gambit. Oh, it's it's worked out what I <laughs> what I wanted to do. When referring to the AI in inverted commas, um, refer to it as the Queen. Let's go. So that's nice. You can like literally point at something and change it. Captured by the Queen captured by you. Yes, play a match. Let's just see what happens. Round one. Oh, we've got that. Oh. Hey, I'm gonna lose to my own AI. Um, whoopsie daisy. Um, so if I go here, it's worth it. Sacrifice is great. There's a checkmate. You are in check. Oh, there's so many ways to get out of check, but why can't I? I'll fix the chess game logic so that when you're in check, you can still move your piece to get out of check. This is a critical rule in chess. It is. It is It is definitely a critical rule in chess. Ooh, what is it doing? I'm going to lose to my own AI. Is it me or are they opening themselves up to some real issues? How am I going to fix this? I'm in check? 
Oh, the queen's in check. Oh, the queen must do something. So basically, I won. Okay, the queen is in check. I mean, it can move out of this position if it wanted to. But essentially, you guys get the idea. I spent about half an hour building a chess game from scratch. And there's so many different ways I could tweak this and make this cooler, change the pieces, maybe give it a theme. I don't know, Futurama theme or something that is like appropriate for, for this. And then share it. Like, let's see what happens if I share it. So if I publish this, publish your app to make it publicly available, publish and we'll package it and publish it. And that's the URL that you can use and share with your friends. Download your app to make it locally available. That is so cool. Oh man. And like, I don't know any code, but my mind is thinking of, of things like streaming alerts or websites that I've been wanting to build for myself. Potentially like scripts in Photoshop or Lightroom or something. There's just so many different things that we can do with this stuff. And the games is just one of them. I'm hoping to do a lot more content around this because I think that there's something very exciting with this vibe coding thing and with what instants are doing here. It's very easy to use, very understandable, a very powerful tool editor for those who actually know how to code. You know, if you don't know how to code, you can prototype something quickly and then maybe send it through to a developer and they can carry it the, the next mile. Um, instead of starting the same process from scratch. This is where I feel like a lot of really good AI comes into, comes into play. These um, tasks that are repetitive and uh, prevent you from making the app better. If you've got any ideas of stuff that I should be building, let me know. I, like really, I want to hear what you have to say in the comments. And if you want to give Instance a try, I'm going to link, uh, link it in the description below so you can check it out. Uh, and don't forget to like this video. And if you enjoyed it and you want to see me make more stuff, hit the subscribe button because uh, I, be, I might be coding something new. I'll see you guys in another video. Cheers.